employed by Pirate Friends. The beatings will continue until morality improves. Anyway, I've been thinking about this and I watched a short today earlier and they had mentioned about the healing oil of God's word and how it heals people. And, and um, I've been thinking about a story in 2 Kings chapter 5 that I'm going to read for you all here in a moment after you, uh, after I just want to say a couple things about it. And um, the story is about Naaman and he has leprosy and he's, uh, he's not even an Israelite. And John mentions him. No, actually, it's I think in the book of Luke mentions him, or Jesus actually mentions him later and talks about how uh, there was a lot of people with leprosy, but he only healed that one Gentile person. And so, um, but the story talks about how uh, he was this great general in an army and he needed to go, um, he had leprosy and the king sent him and he needed to, the task he needed to do was to dip in the Jordan River seven times. And my understanding is the Jordan River wasn't a fancy uh, task, hard thing to get to uh, challenge. It was just the muddy old Jordan River and it wasn't the bestest, most prestigious waters, but in the story, you'll see that he was like, why wouldn't it be something great? Or why would he come out and wave his hand over me? And um, so the point though, was it was a task that this prideful person couldn't get past, but he decided because someone said, well, how much more so? Why don't you just try it? And he went ahead and did it and he came out cleansed. And so um, that's what God's word has become to me where I realized a long time ago that washing myself in his word countless times over and over has transformed me and who I am. And it's helped me transform my thinking on a lot of things as well. And God's word has cleansed me and made me whole. And when I'm not in the word, then it's easy to fall on my nose again and again. So it's important to keep getting up and to keep in the word, listening to it. Not just this part or that part, those crumbs or this crumbs, but the whole thing. As much as you can get into the whole word, cover to cover. And um, I mean, we could go into a lot of deep subjects on all that, but it's important to know that his word and ultimately our heavenly father heals us and uh, we can tap into that healing through knowing him believing in him trusting in him building our faith in him and to each one of us a different measure of faith has been given and that can be directly rated to how much time each one of us has spent in his word so listen to his word because faith comes by hearing and hearing comes by the word of god there's a little squirrel friend coming over here to check us out. Anyway, enjoy the reading. Second Kings chapter five, and I think I'll read Luke as well. Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded because through him, the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. <clears throat> she said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means, go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. 
the letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to, to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. As soon as the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his robes and said, Am I God? Can I kill and bring back to life? Why does this fellow send someone to me to be cured of his leprosy? See how he is trying to pick a quarrel with me? When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his robes, he sent him this message. Why have you torn your robes? Have the man come to me, and he will know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman went with his horses and chariots and stopped at the door of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him. Go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan, and your flesh will be restored, and you will be cleansed. But Naaman went away angry and said, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call in the name of the Lord, his God, wave his hand over the spot, and cure me of my leprosy. Are not Abanan and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Couldn't I wash in them and be cleansed? So he turned and went off in a rage. Naaman's servant went to him and said, My father, if the prophet had told you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much more than when he tells you wash and be cleansed? So he went down and dipped himself in the Jordan seven times, as the man of God had told him, and his flesh was restored and became clean like that of a young boy. Then Naaman and all his attendants went back to the man of God. He stood before him and said, Now I know that there is no God in all the world except in Israel. So please accept a gift from your servant. The prophet answered, As surely as the Lord lives, whom I serve, I will not accept the thing. And even though Naaman urged him, he refused. If you will not, said Naaman, please let me, your servant, give you a much give <clears throat> please let me your servant be given as much earth as a pair of mules can carry for your servant will never again make burnt offerings and sacrifices to any other god but the lord but may the lord forgive your servant for this one thing when my master enters the temple of rimmon to bow down and he is leaning on my arm and i have to bow there also when i bow down in the temple of rimmon may the lord forgive your servant for this Go in peace, Elisha said. Naaman is mentioned by Jesus in the New Testament. Let's read Luke chapter 4 to see how this turns out. I assure you that there were many widows in Israel in Elijah's time, when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land. Yet Elijah was not sent to them, to any of them, but to a widow in Zarephath, in the region of Sidon. And there were many in Israel with leprosy in the time of Elisha, the prophet, yet none of them was cleansed, only Naaman, the Syrian. All the people in the synagogue were furious when they heard this.